Hey, this is Sarah Ayler here with Softflex Company. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about crimps and crimping and crimp covers. So starting out, I want to go through the different sizes of crimps uh, that we offer at Softflex Company. They come in multiple different types of metal as well. You'll find silver filled, sterling silver, gold filled, and copper. Uh, today I'm showing you all silver filled, I believe. Uh, and that's usually the, the type of metal that I use uh, the most frequently. So the smallest size is a one by one millimeter. And when I say one by one, I'm talking about the diameter of the crimp as well as the length of the crimp. So it's diameter by length. Uh, so this is a one millimeter diameter by a one millimeter length. Now these are going to be really useful uh, for anchoring beads in place on the wire, as you can see here in this design. You can also use it with our very fine .010 diameter beading wire, um, which is used for really small gemstones like sapphires and diamonds that have really tiny holes, um, and also for, for bead weaving projects, sewing, crocheting, knitting, and, and all sorts of designs like that. There is a micro crimper that works with the one by ones and I actually have three crimpers here that you can see and they deal with the various sizes of crimps that I'm showing you. And the only difference between the three of them is the size of the jaw. The one by one is going to work with a micro crimper the 2x2 two two with a regular crimper, and the 3x3 three three with a Mighty Crimper. You can really see with the Mighty Crimper um, how, the, how these work. There's a rounder in the front and then a crimper in the back. And that's true for all three of them. They're just different sizes. So moving on to the next size, this is the most commonly used size of crimp. It's a 2x2 two two millimeter crimp tube. That's what you're going to use just for a basic connection. If you're just taking one single strand and connecting to a clasp or connecting to a connector, you're typically going to use a 2x2 two two crimp tube. That's going to work with our 0.014 diameter, our 0.019 diameter, and even our 0.024 diameter in most cases. And finally, I have a 3x3 three three crimp. The 3x3 three three is going to work when you have multiple strands. So you can see in this design here, I have one, two, three strands of wire going into the crimp tube, passing through the clasp, and then coming back through the crimp tube. And that is big enough that it can handle um, three strands of that .019. In fact, it can handle many more than three strands. Um, so that's really helpful if you have a multiple strand design um, you can also use it with uh, leathers and cording and all sorts of other things that are a little bit thicker than, than a beading wire. Uh, the 2 by 2s uh, you will use a 3 millimeter crimp cover. So uh, you always think about that very first number, which is the diameter number, a 2 in this case. You want 1 millimeter bigger for your crimp cover, a 3 millimeter. Same with the 3 by 3s We've got four millimeter crimp covers for the three by threes. And crimp covers are nice if you crimp your tube and you want to cover it up so it looks a little bit more like a bead. Uh, the crimp cover is basically like a little Pac-Man, an open-faced bead. And it slips over the top of the crimp and closes down um, over it so, so that it looks like a, a little bit more of a finished piece. So to finish off, I wanted to show you how to make a basic bracelet, especially for those of you who have never beaded before. Um, I wanted to show you just how easy this is. So usually when I go to make something, I string my beads right onto the wire coming off of the spool. And this is nice because it allows me to not waste any wire. In this case, I went ahead and strung my beads. And what I did was I just put a handy dandy bead stopper on the bottom. And what that is is just a little clip that holds the beads in place. 
and that way I don't have to worry about them sliding off uh, when I'm doing some other things before I get to crimp it in place. I'm going to use a 2x2 two two crimp tube. I'm using my .024 heavy beading wire because it is a bracelet. It's going to get a lot of wear and tear. I want to make sure that I've got a thick enough beading wire underneath these large gemstone beads uh, that it's going to stand the test of time. You want to string your crimp tube onto the wire, pass it through your clasp, and then go back into the crimp tube. Now these are soft flex crimp tubes, so they're double the wall thickness of most. They're also seamless and they're extremely strong. You can see I don't even let the tail pass back through the crimp tube because there's just no need for it. That way I don't waste any little bit of wire. And I'm going to go ahead and take my crimping pliers. Again, I'm using the back hole first, which has a little tooth. It's a crimper. I'm going to compress. Then I'm going to spin it to the front hole and I'm going to compress again with the rounder. And with the rounder, I'll actually go around it two or three times, making sure it's all nice and tightened down. So you're cinching the metal of the crimp tube into that nylon coating so that it's not going to slip or slide. And then you've got a nice tight connection where you can actually pull on it and you don't have to worry about the crimp coming loose. It's really important though that you have a good quality beading wire and a good quality crimp tube. A lot of people have difficulty with crimps, but it's mostly because there are a lot of expensive, inexpensive ones on the market um, that can give you a lot of trouble. Okay, so I'm going to pull my beads tight up to that crimp. Now, this is these are some large beads, so there has to be quite a bit of slack for this to fit comfortably on my wrist and, and maintain a circular shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and keep it in a circle, cut off my extra wire, grab my next crimp tube, and string the second half of my clasp. Go back through the crimp tube, so just all the same steps as before, and I'm really going to push that through this time. Now the 024 fits into a 2x2 two two really tightly. It does go through, but you will have to probably work it a little bit to make sure that it can go through easily. And once you get a little bit through, it makes it easy to actually just take your crimping plier. The very tip of it is flat, and so I often use it kind of like a chain nose plier, and you can pull down on it. And that will allow you to get a little bit of leverage on that beading wire to pull it tight. Okay, so now that I've got it pretty much where I want it, again, I want to make sure this is going to easily go into a circle. And you'll see when I lift, there is quite a bit of slack for the beading wire, but it is a necessity for it to make a nice circular shape. I never want your beading wire to be too, too tight, because if it's too tight, um, then that those beads just cut away at the tense wire and they can really do some damage. So I'm trying to tighten up this just a little bit more so that it looks even on both sides. I, I like to always look on my loops both sides and make sure they're even. And I'm going to do that same step again with the crimping pliers. The back hole with the tooth and then the front hole with the rounder. And I'm going to go around a couple times. Making sure it's all nice and tight. So I don't lose this bracelet someday when I'm wearing it. And finally, I'm going to take the flat flush side of my cutter, slide it in next to the wire and up to the crimp and clip. And then if I want to, I can always add crimp covers at the very end. And like I said, those are just little uh, C-shaped open-faced beads. And they slide right over the top of that crimp tube. And you just close them down with a chain nose plier. So I hope that this was helpful. If you'd like to learn more about crimps or about Softlex beading wire, we'd love to see you on our website. It's www.softlexcompany.com. 
If you have any questions about cramps, crimping, or beading wire, or anything beading related, please feel free to leave comments below. I do answer comments on a regular basis, and I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have any suggestions or ideas for future videos, I'd love to hear those too. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.